one of the uh, people that knows all about cool stuff and has built himself a very nice career talking about cool things is our friend Jeff Canada. Everybody, please welcome Jeff to the show. It's good to have you back, my friend. Thanks. Good, good to see good to you. Be here. Good to see you. Um, yes, and and uh, we were talking, and and uh, I, I it made it clear to me that you know pe- people are busy doing all of the the stuff that they're working on, and they may not know that we shoot this show in a live venue. You were surprised to find that out, but we actually shoot yeah. this in a cafe. It's oh, cool. at uh, the VFS Cafe at, at 390 uh, West Hastings in Vancouver, and you are welcome to come on down anytime that you want to. I see that question pop up where do, where do i get tickets how do i find out where to go and that's where you go and you can see cool guests like this jeff how's your life buddy how are you doing good it's crazy it's fun it's um it's it's wonderful i have a new project um i'm doing a live play dungeons and dragons show now called the dungeon run where i'm the dm and uh that has taken up a ton of time but it is it is so much fun it's such a passion project so i'm doing that in my video game podcast DLC and uh, the slash film cast as well talking about movies and TV shows uh, so lot, lots lots going on very cool let's talk about the dungeon run for a second because this is uh, I noticed in the credits that this was created by your old buddy from the totally rad show Alex Albrecht that's right and yes. this it sounds like something that you guys have been talking about for 15 years yes absolutely yeah. it is uh, that is how we met Alex and Dan and I met playing Dungeons and Dragons. And that's how the Totally Rad Show started. So Dungeons and Dragons has been part of our DNA since then. And I started DMing games with them and other friends for a while. And we talked, we had a concept of an animated Dungeons and Dragons show or a live play Dungeons and Dragons show before people were even talking about doing that years and years and years ago. Uh, Never happened. And now live play D&D is like a thing. It's really huge and a lot of people are doing it and it's great. There are a lot of wonderful shows out there. Uh, and so we managed to get the funds to do it the way we've always imagined it. Uh, Alex really put together an amazing cast and crew, and we're doing it like a television show. We have an animatronic Mind Flayer puppet that hosts the show, sort of like the Crypt Keeper from the old Tales of the Crypt. And uh, we have these incredible models that the players get to play on. We have this in- amazing set, and we're just blowing the doors off the thing, and people are really digging it. It, it is I've never worked harder on anything in my life, and I am loving every second of it. It is such a blast. Inventing a world, creating storylines, and having adventures with these players has been great. Does it put more pressure on you as the DM, like uh, to you, you know perform more and to think about what the audience is going to see? Because you make up a lot of this as you go, don't you? Oh, absolutely. It's an improvised storytelling medium. I mean, it is. I have these incredible plans. I spend. I can't even tell you how many hours I spend thinking things through and trying to come up and trying to anticipate what the players are going to do. And then they always do something that I would never expect. And (laughs) that's the joy is figuring out how that's all going to work, what's going to happen. I think this week I did, uh, I don't know, eight or ten different voices of characters that they came into contact with. And we have another added element that a lot of other shows don't do. We are live and the audience interacts with the show. So the audience can actually affect what happens in real time. So that's a whole other element of being thrown for a loop and not knowing because the audience can change things and interject items and do all kinds of stuff. Um, Is the audience kind of like, a, like a, you know, a partner for you on the DM side or are they part of the party? Are they, do they represent another player? Or are they, a are little they, of any- both. The, the, early on, the players found this amulet and they can communicate to the audience through this amulet and the amulet can manifest items for them. And so sometimes they're helping the players. They, the, the audience can actually buy forces of good or forces of evil that will affect the audience. I had a force of evil played on me the dm which changed all kinds of crazy stuff it is it's wild and fun and the live chat is a blast people can inf- they can communicate to the players through the amulet so they can just say things it's it's really fun and collaborative uh, and people are loving it i I've, I've never been part of a project that had more positivity immediately from youtube comments and uh, reactions i've gotten I'm so proud of it, and I'm and I'm. It is really a passion project. So That's I hope awesome. people check it out. It's you can find it on YouTube, uh, the Dungeon Run. We just put up episode seven today. 
Uh, we're also as an audio podcast and live every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time on the caffeine on uh, caffeine.tv slash the dungeon run. Yeah, caffeine is uh, it's an it's another streaming video platform that's out there. And it's been uh, you, you told me about this a few years ago, but it clearly it just keeps building and building and growing. And now they're investing in new cool content like this. Yeah, we're one of uh, two of their first original programming initiatives. Um, and the thing about caffeine is it's instantaneous. So all of the shows are very much audience participation because it's instant. And it's not like waiting around a few seconds like you have on Twitch or other services. Um, so we're taking advantage of that. And um, it's just been a dream. I, the whole cast is amazing. And working with Alex again has been so much fun. So I hope people check it out because I want to keep doing it for a long, long time. When you think about this show, it sounds perfect for you, pal. I'm so happy that you guys are doing this. Thanks. Is it, you know, is it bigger and better in your, like, in, in the realization of this dream than what you were thinking about years ago? Like, did, did you go beyond yeah. the scope? Yeah. I mean, I never thought we would have an animatronic puppet. <laughs> you know, that's, it's, it's quite something. And, uh, I mean... You should see the models that we've got. We have a Hollywood studio building models for us. They're, they've built towers. There's a, the second episode has a fallen tower on its side that I imagined in my head. And then when we saw what they actually built, it was so far beyond what I could have dreamed of. That's and awesome. yeah, the show is, is just on a scale that I couldn't possibly have hoped for. And even better than that, the people, the, the players that we got, because we cast this show. It wasn't just a group of friends that already existed. We went and cast the best actors we could find, and we got so lucky. And they're the all big players. D&D fans? They're all D&D players. Uh, there's actually one player that ha has uh, less experience than others, but it's wonderful because she is learning as she's going, and I love that for the audience to see that happening for too. For sure, it's, yeah. It's really great. That is and awesome. And it's also, also family-friendly. A lot of these shows, you know, there's F-bombs, every other thing. Ours is a PG show, and we, I've gotten amazing me messages from people who are like, I watch it with my 8-year-old, I watch it with my 10-year-old, I love it, and uh, so that's a joy, too. That's awesome. H how old is your oldest now? Uh, he'll be three in September. He's like two and a half. So two yeah, and a half. Okay. So because my my daughter's seven now. So and I want to get. I'm not a huge D and D person. I've been busy with video games, as you know. So, sure. But I want. I want to. I want to play some D and D with with my daughter because we pass by D and D stores and she's like, "What's that? I want to go check that." I had and yeah. I had uh, Sam Whitwer was on recently and he gave me the book that he wrote. Did you Did you see the D and D artifact book? Oh yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Uh, and she so she's been flipping out, but. W what is the right age to introduce a kid to D&D, do you think? Well, I haven't had the experience yet. I, I'm excited to, to get to that point with my kids, but I, I don't think seven is too young. I mean, every parent is going to know their kid. Uh, and, but there are lots of – the thing that's amazing about D&D is it's just a tool set to unlock your imagination. Right. It's just rules to have a, have a story together. And so it can be as – kid friendly or as adult as your imagination wants it to be it's it's really just rules and even in the rules of D&D &D, they say take or leave any of these rules as you want because oh, it's all about awesome. facilitating story that is awesome have you yeah. heard from the the D&D &D people have you like the the people that actually put out the rule sets and and all the books and stuff we have been reaching out to them uh, i just got actually a tweet uh, from from Greg Tito, who's their PR guy, who is super excited. He just saw the show. They had a big convention uh, over the last month that they were planning for, so they, you know, they they were had their hands full. But uh, I think they're going to flip out when they see our show because it it's yeah. on a scale that most of these shows aren't capable of, and that. It, I think I think people are really digging it, and I think they like I, it. Too. I feel like we're in the moment with this show too. It's like the perfect time to have the dungeon run out there. the The name of the show is perfect. When I see <laughs> it, I see the passion and the and the joy that you guys have. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm ecstatic for all of you because it looks Thanks. like you're putting something together that you really love and believe in. And uh, you know, I, I feel like. I've had a couple of of guests here on EP Live that have really expressed how important it is to do these tabletop games and the social aspect of it and and how great it is in this, you know, digital first kind of world that we're in on our screens all the time to sit around with friends and share a story together is really profound and important and you guys are with the right product at the right time 
and you love it. It's great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I love video games. Don't get me wrong. I do love video games, but there's something magical about telling a story together where you all sort of have an inkling of what might happen, but you're a, you're greater than the sum of your parts. The The story goes where none of you could have anticipated because you were all together. That's awesome. So in the rundown, I don't know if you were watching the show when we started live, but uh, the first story uh, or one of the first stories was uh, the Uncharted movie, yeah. which is uh, being directed by your buddy. Yeah. And uh, how does that make you feel that Dan is going to be directing an Uncharted movie? I, I mean, I'm over the moon. I, it is uh, it is a dream come true. It, it is uh, it, seeing your friend achieve their dreams and know they are th the best person in the world to be doing something like that. And it's a property that I care about and love. And I know how much he loves it and how much he wants to do right by it. Uh, and that, you know, that's, it's amazing. So it's a, it's, if you had told me 10 years ago, I probably would have believed you because I know Dan and I was like, but I also, it would have blown my mind. It blows my mind now knowing that that's the case. I see the announcement of the release date and I'm like, I can't believe that that's Dan's movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Well, congrats to the three of you because you guys are all making dreams come true. How often do you get together with Dan and, and Alex? These oh, days? all the time, all yeah? the time. I yeah. mean, we are, we're actually planning, I think in the next few weeks, we're gonna go and do like a, a weekend. Uh, we're gonna get a cabin and just hang out, the, uh, us and a few other friends. So yeah, we hang out all the time. Yeah, we're good That's buddies. That's awesome. Yeah. Is it a, I, I, I know like you guys are all busy with your own careers. You're working on different gigs and you're acting and, and you're auditioning for different things and working on different projects and Alex is producing and hosting and doing things. Yeah. But you guys have got some real history now and as you guys are getting older and, and maybe uh, having kids and getting, are you recognizing the value in that friendship even more? As oh, time yeah. Goes on. oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan has a daughter and I've got kids and yeah I mean it is these are some of the best friends of my life and they always will be and uh, yeah for sure that's amazing brother uh, okay, uh, you are going to be at E3 next week. I know how much you love video games. We met at E3, I'm sure. That was probably, well, I don't even know which one. We've known each other forever. And I yeah. sure miss working with you, and I wish I had the budget to just throw uh, some money towards you to, to make reviews on the run again with us. But uh, oh, man. Be Jeff Kanata is the best, everybody. He's amazing. Uh, <laughs> but I know how much you love games. What are you excited about at uh, E3 2019? I think there's a lot to be excited about. If I had to pick one thing... It would probably be the Avengers game yeah. uh, that Square Enix is going to unveil um, because I'm a Marvel zombie from way back. I love Marvel Comics. I love the Avengers. And There's see, no pressure I, on I, that I, game, right? No pressure at all <laughs> for Chris. <laughs> I hope, I hope it's, it just knocks my socks off. I, I mean, I know people are saying it's sort of the division or destiny with the Avengers. Okay, sign me up. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what Microsoft is gonna show. I think feel like they really have the opportunity because Sony is not gonna be there to have the spotlight. And I hope they understand that they can knock it out of the park if they, you know, if they, they pull it off. Um, I'm excited to see if, if they talk about a new Fable. I like that franchise, I would be into that. Um, I wanna see more about Cyberpunk. I'm very excited for that game. It's, I think it's, there's a, it's a weird year for those of us you know, you and me who've been doing this a long time. It's yep. a weird year because it's so much has changed, but I think there's plenty to be excited about. Um, you saw the announcement about Modern Warfare, the new uh, the Call of Duty rebrand and the kind of redo. Any thoughts on uh, on that? Are you are you a fan of Call of Duty as a franchise? Um, I have drifted from Call of Duty in recent years, uh, yeah. especially last year. I. I'm a dinosaur who plays those games for the campaign. So yep. last year's iteration didn't really interest me. So the idea that they're coming back to campaign in a really strong way has me more interested for sure. Us uh, dinosaurs got to stick together. <laughs> and I, I don't think, you know, we need to kind of hammer home how important single player games are as often as possible and not <laughs> ever take the eye off of that because look at what was up for best game of the year last year. It was Spider-Man yeah. and God of War and uh, you know a couple of other single player kind of first yeah. type of experiences. They're incredibly important. I agree, I agree. And, and I, I don't think they're going away as you pointed out. I mean, 
God of War and Spider-Man are two of the best single player games of all time. And, yes. you know, it's, we're, we're getting great stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited that Call of Duty is, is leaning back into narrative. And it certainly seems like they have ambitious ideas about tone. I, I'm a little doubtful that they'll be able to pull off what they seem to be indicating. Mm-hmm. But I would, I'm curious. I, I want to see more for sure. Yeah, cool. Um, what about the, uh, you, you know, some of the, the games that are kind of remastered and stuff? Does that excite you? Like, are you excited to play a new Crash Team Racing or Crash Team Racing again? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, that was never really my jam. I, I, I think it's cool that these games are getting... I think we went through this period of remastering where it was just up stuff and adding anti-aliasing and stuff and then they're like well we're gonna redo the textures and you know and now we're we've got the resident evil 2s of the world and the shadows of the colossus of the world and that's what i'm excited about i'm excited about a complete re-imagining with the technology that we have now uh with these great experiences that we all remember so yeah that stuff i think is super cool and i guess final fantasy 7 is right like that's going to prove it out how important they can be if it's yeah. successful right right are you yeah. are you psyched for that are you a big uh, ff7 fan from back in the day i i played it back in the day yeah i mean i was always more of a pc rpg guy but um i think that yeah I, i'm very interested to play that again i haven't sure. played it in a long time so i would love to revisit that game yeah the uh, I think the big announcement for Stadia was yesterday, the big kind of reveal and the Founders Pack pricing and everything like that. So today, YouTube is inundated with I hate Stadia videos yeah. and tons of negativity, which is so cool. If, we, <laughs> if everybody could just be super negative all the time, it'd be great. It would be amazing. I, but, I think you got your wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true, right? So um, you and I are birds of a feather, I think, with this uh, – you know, fin- middle finger up at negativity. I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, on Stadia. What do you think about Stadia? I think it's the future. And I think that it is it is democratizing video games. And I think what Microsoft is going to show this week or this Sunday will uh, be more of that. And I think that's the direction that we're leaning. I know people are up in arms about not owning games or being tied to the Internet. But... I think that is going to be such a tiny blip of history where we have to be concerned about that. Right. Uh, you and I are, or I've been around in this industry long enough to remember when people were freaking out that the Xbox was not going to have a 56K modem in it. It was yeah. only going to be high-speed internet. And oh my <laughs> God, well, we, we, they're eliminating all these people on 56K. Yes, for a tiny, tiny fraction of time. Yeah. But the upside of what streaming is going to do and nobody worries about it with Netflix, right? Every, Netflix is normal to everyone. Right. And that's how it's going to be with video games, too. I think you'll still be able to buy and own things, but it eliminates the barrier of entry of a $400 box in your living room. Right. I mean, yes, they're offering a $129 Founders Pack, but you don't need it. You yeah. don't need it. You can literally, everything you, you want to play Stadia, you already own. Just turn on your computer, plug in a controller, and open Chrome. It's yeah. like it, you and you buy individual games. That is a total paradigm shift. Yeah. And this idea of a ten dollar per month fee, like Microsoft is already doing with Game Pass, to play thousands of video games, it's going to change everything. And I think it's for the better. I think it's going to allow people who've been priced out of this very expensive hobby to be able to do it. I mean, all you got to do is look at Disney Plus, right? Disney Plus wouldn't exist if Netflix wasn't a massive success. And here's a company going, well, we're going to just take all of our stuff off of this very successful platform and we're going to build our own and we're going to offer our whole suite of, I mean, that's honestly, that's what it feels like they have been building too. This yeah. Disney Plus is Disney. It's now the way they're going to get Disney into our veins. You know, all of this buying Star Wars and Mar. it feels like it's all been leading to this. They want yeah. that subscription and you can mainline as much Disney as you want and it will, there will be exclusivity across the board there. That is the future of investing in content. You right. want to be able to have a, a person be subscribed directly to that service and download what they want from that service. And yeah. Disney is proving that out. It's not Netflix kind of showed that it was possible. Disney Plus is saying this is the future. This is the way that it is. And Stadia, it had to happen. It was either, 
it was going to either be Amazon first or Microsoft. It had one of these big players had to do this, right? Yeah, and I think we're all they're all going to do it. I think you've yeah. seen the already the announcements that Sony's partnering with Microsoft for their, you know, Azure cloud services and Nintendo's partnering, partnering with Microsoft for Azure. It, this is going to be something that is going to be a moot point in 5 years. We're all going to look right. back and be like, "Do you remember when people were upset about that?" Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, and I think we probably do have another 5 years of people you know, fighting for physical and, and and physical won't go away. There will be stores and outlets and ways to be able to pick up physical. But I, th I think it's going to be very analogous to like how many Blu-rays do you buy these days, Jeff? None. I, it, the services yeah. are great. And I, I understand the feeling that something is being taken away from you when you're not buying something. But I prefer convenience and downsizing. I, I, I can only speak from my own personal opinion, and that is... It is something I'm willing to give up to just have convenience and right. at a lower price. I mean, two sixty dollars games a year, you know, you're at the ten dollar per month fee. So, and you've got hundreds of games to choose from. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's. It, I mean, it's definitely a mind blowing change, you know. But so was Netflix, and so right. was Disney Plus. And I've heard that Warner Brothers is reevaluating the DC subscription service, and they're probably going to roll all of that into a new Warner Brothers service pretty soon. Uh, it's 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 the inevitable. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's get back to E3 titles. Are you what are, what are you psyched? We know a lot about what's happening with Nintendo. Is there a Nintendo game that you are most excited for coming I think up? Mario in Maker. Mario Maker yeah. is 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 just I mean, the fact that there's a a campaign that's insane. Uh, and there's evidently it's these levels are incredible and well crafted and a sort of master class in level design. Yeah. Uh, give me that. Uh, that that product just seems mind-boggling with the, the amount of stuff they've jammed into it. Uh, I've never been a Pokemon guy, so yeah, that's the game that I'm most excited about. Nintendo. Yeah, yeah so Mario Maker is an eternal game, isn't it? It feels like that's a that's as much a part of the portfolio now for Nintendo as any Mario game. Like we'll we'll get variations on Mario Maker forever, and it will it'll probably be one per console generation if yeah. they keep making consoles. But, you know, the content will flow from Mario Maker forever. Yeah, it's, it's infinite 2D Marios. It's wild. <laughs> What's been the best game you've played so far this year before we go into E3? Or uh, your the, favorite? Uh, the first one that came to my head is Ape Out. Cool. Either Ape Out or Baba Is You. I think those two games absolutely floored me with how original and fun and, and brilliant they are. What is Baba Is You? Oh, it's a puzzle game that I played on Switch. I think it's also on PC. It'll blow your mind. It is, I don't know why somebody didn't come up with this concept before. You play Baba, it's a little uh, sheep, ba, ba, and okay. Baba Is You, and it says it in text on the screen, Baba Is You. And if you move away from that and put something else in front of Is You, then you become that. So let's, let's say it says wall, and there's a bunch of walls on this very 2D flat, boring looking screen. You move your little Baba guy and you push the word wall in front of is you. Now you are the wall and you move the wall and you can move the wall around. And it, it literally, you are affecting the rules of the world by changing the text on the screen and puzzles ensue from that. It is genius. That sounds, you, you sound stoned, but I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give this game a shot. I, I mean, that, that sounds incredible. It's, it's I, awesome. I, have you played Sekiro Shadows Dies twice? No, I know <laughs> I should have, but, uh, it, you know, I'm not a From Software guy, really, and yeah. it, I just didn't think it would be my jam. It's tough as hell, but yeah. it's, a, it's a very, very good game. Um, any other titles that you're looking forward to? Any, any other big games at all th at, at, from E3 that you know uh, about? Yeah, I mean... Um, Outer Worlds, I think, is a game uh, I'm, I'm interested in seeing more of. Um, uh, I guess, you know, the new, next Gears of War will probably be there. I'm sure they'll show more Halo. Yep. Um, oh, the Star Wars game, of course. The, the Infinity Jedi War, Fallen um, Order. What's that? Jedi Fallen Order. Yes, Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, yes. I mean, I, I think Titanfall 2 is one of the mo most underrated shooters of the last generation. I, I, it might be the best shooter. 
It's so good. It's right? so it, good. Like just if you categorically look at all of the the awesome it brings you, it might be the best just out and out action first person shooter experience out there. I was trying yeah. to think of a of one that delivers m more. I mean, there's there's things that were innovative and maybe that team had worked on stuff that kind of change things before Titanfall, but Titanfall delivers on so, Titanfall 2 delivers on so many levels. It's it really crazy. does. It's yeah. extraordinary. And, and I, that team with Star Wars, come on. I mean, I think I'm excited to see what, how that game plays. We've seen just a taste of the story uh, trailer, but how it plays is going to be very exciting. Have you got a hands-on appointment for that? You all set up for that? Yeah, I'm yes. really very much looking forward to it. And Cyberpunk, you're going to be checking that out? Yes, indeed. Dying Light 2? Dying Light 2, I saw, I think, last year or the year before. Uh, looked interesting, but, you know, I, I do not have an appointment for that game. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, next week we're going to be uh, definitely getting together and comparing some notes, and, and <laughs> I will try to stop you and get some, uh, some thoughts on what you have seen. Um, cool. And people can check you out right now on the DLC podcast. Yeah, 5by5.tv slash DLC. With uh, Christian Spicer. That's right. And various guests, and, and you guys do an awesome job with that. Uh, and you can watch uh, The Dungeon Run when? I Dungeon guess Run it, is live on Wednesday nights at caffeine.tv slash The Dungeon Run, or you can find all the episodes we've done so far on YouTube or as an audio podcast. Very cool. Yep. Anything else that you were working on, you busy, busy man? Yeah, I do, the Slash Filmcast also you can find at slashfilmcast.com, talking about movies and TV shows. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All right, brother. Thank you so oh. much. Always great talking to you, Vic. Thanks great so much. Great talking with you. We'll see you in uh, in just a few days. Have yeah. a great time at E3, and uh, and uh, I can't wait to to clink some glasses and and give each other high fives and hugs. Right on, man. Uh, safe right. journey. All right, buddy. All right. See you soon.